Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be talking to you about what you need to put in your portfolio as evidence of your learning in science. To begin, your portfolio is going to have at least three work samples and as many as five for each of the four categories of science proficiency. Um, for example, there should be at least three, but no more than five in standards and skills thinking as a scientist, community, and reflection. That means that you'll have a total of 12 documents, but no more than 20 that are assembled in your portfolio. Each of these materials that you're gonna put into your portfolio for each of the four categories will serve as the evidence of your very best learning in each of these four categories. So you're going to take the time to get your portfolio and look through everything that you have. There's a lot of work in there because there's been a lot of learning and a lot of things that we've done this semester. So you're going to find the documents that you plan to keep that really show you the evidence. I recommend sorting these documents into four piles, one pile for each of the four categories. Then, once you think that you have all the documents that you need, you'll organize them by section. So again, um, once you have those four piles with all the documents you want, you can just put them in order, um, put them all together, and then you can add them back into your portfolio. You also want to add the proficiency tracker that we did on day one, or our first step of our portfolio, and you can just add that to the front or the back of your portfolio. Finally, you can recycle or take home any of the documents that you are not going to be using as evidence for your proficiency in science in semester one. Note that as you look down at the four areas, there are a few important things I want to point out. First, the pink, anything highlighted in pink was from our collisions unit. Anything highlighted in blue is from our speakers unit. Anything that isn't highlighted was from both. The next thing is, for each of the four categories, I give you a caveat or um, something that you must do for each of these four categories. While you do get a lot of choice in what you put, you do need to have some particular documents. For the case of standards and skills, you have to have at least one final assessment for each unit. So in other words, you have to have something from the collisions unit, you have to have something from the uh, speaker's unit. You can't just choose to have a final assessment um, or a summative test from one. For the thinking as a scientist, you need to have at least one initial model and you need to have at least one unit reflection concept map. And that is the box that you're going to fill out. You're going to learn more about that shortly, but you need to have at least one of them. For community, you need to have at least one self-assessment document. There were a couple that we did in class. This collaborative group one we've already done, and this was about the work that we did in the magnet poster. This um, engaging in classroom discourse is more general, and it applies to kind of all of semester one. And then finally, for the reflection, you need to have at least one unit reflection, and that is the same document as this one up here, the, the chart that you make, the, the concept map, but in this case, it'll be focused on the reflection questions on the back. All right, scientists, I'm looking forward to seeing all of your work and evidence of learning.